my theme of gratitude. Um, okay, so I haven't been doing this for very long. Uh, and the minute that I started doing this, probably a couple of months ago, um, I was just so embraced by the community and I felt so much love. Um, and I actually wrote something, um, a little story about that that I wanted to share with all of you. And I was going to wait until the last round, but I can't. So. <laughs> Is that good? creation and exaggeration. She was adorned with a crown of expression, bestowed with the soul of an oracle. She, much like you, was a poet. And one day, when very small, this little prophetic being went to her mother, a God-fearing and practical woman, a soul very different from her own. And this little seer held a drawing in her hand, a work of painstaking craftsmanship, a labor of love, a child's prized masterpiece, and said proudly, one day, I'm going to be an artist. Hmm. A worried look formed on her mother's face. <laughs> <laughs> no, oh, honey, oh, no. you can't be an artist, her mother said. Artists don't make any money. <laughs> and with these words, the girl watched her sight slowly fade from view. Mm -hmm. Her muse slowly back into the corners of her mind. Mm -hmm. But some do, she whispered quietly, her little eyes tracing the drawing she had created with such care. But most don't, her mother said, patting her back matter-of-factly and slowly slapping the drawing on the, fit, on the fridge with an absent-minded haphazardness. You would have to be really good, and that just isn't very likely. Yeah. And the girl understood. She was not an artist. That was for other people, for bigger people, for people with talent for people who were likely to succeed. Mm. So she tried. She tried hard to be something else. A teacher, a chef, a scientist, a nanny, a philosopher, a nurse, a therapist, an actress, a lawyer, a bank teller, a zookeeper, an elephant tamer, and everything else her little heart could think of because she already knew she wasn't an artist. But she just couldn't shut off the voices in her head, <laughs> the strange musings, the dark visions, the half-crazed words that would consume her being, devouring her insides with a desperate desire to get out. She could not scratch the oracle from her soul. She could not erase the muse from her head. So she was lost for a long time. Lost within the world around her. Lost within her own mind. And then one day, almost by accident, she stepped into a room. A room filled with artistic expression, filled with feelings and heartaches, with musings and nonsense. A room filled to the brim with change and chaos, where words are sustenance and come as you are as a way of being. Mm. A room full of poets. She looked around at the powerful energies gathered in the space and greeted them hesitantly, in awe of the magnanimous beauty they expelled. Hello, she told the room softly. And at her words, a being stepped out of the mass of glorious entities to receive her. Welcome back, retorted the cheerful voice of a magic man. <laughs> she looked at this cheerful magic man in this magic poetic room and was confused. But I've never been here before, she said awkwardly. The magic man looked her up and down, his eyes twinkling with an old knowledge of something long forgotten, and said, No, I'm sure you've been here before. I said confidently. <laughs> no, she said, you must be mistaken. He shrugged. An amused look etched in his gaze. Whatever you say. And that was that. <laughs> Except that it wasn't. Because it happened again. She began to speak, to try out her sound in this expressive room, and a voice would call out, surely I know you. No, she retorted with growing agitation. You must be mistaken. I've never been here before. Again and again, the girl would call out and someone would answer back, I know you. 
Surely I know you, they would say. Some greeted her with confidence, as an old friend. Others just had an inkling of a memory they couldn't quite grasp onto, and would approach her voice with quandary. Have we met? <laughs> Still others, proud and gifted seers, were utterly disbelieving of the very notion she conveyed. <laughs> Never been here before. <laughs> she was recognized and greeted by people and spirits she didn't know and she didn't understand. Positively perplexed, the girl gave up and sat down next to a giant yellow flower swaying in the middle of the room. Why do they all say they know me? She asked with utter frustration. The flower, with its bright petals made of starlight, stared at her with recognition and answered, because you've always been here. But I haven't. I've never been here. Uh, but you have. You've always been here. You were born here and died here, and you never really left. You were just lost. And at that moment, the girl remembered. She remembered everything she had always known. She, uh, she saw the essence of her being reflected in the walls and floorboards of that room, and the voices of every beautiful being in its space, and the twinkling eyes of the magic man, and the vivid brightness of the yellow flower. And she realized they were right. She had been here all along. She had prophesied the unavoidable. She had witnessed her fate. She finally saw, she finally remembered what she saw so long ago, that the moment she would step into the room she had never left, <coughs> she was and would always be a poet. George, come on up. You're next. Everybody, welcome, George.